slowly, slowly, some pain started to build up in his heart. He just went through some kind of uh, some kind of problems with his heart, and at a certain moment, he just collapsed and fell. People start to gather up around him. What happened? What happened? And the, the, the David saw that it's his father. He never knew that his father was in you know, in the audience, and and um, they called that son right away, and and they took they came to that he was his son, so he. So accompanied him uh, to, to, to the hospital in the in the hotel in the hospital in the ambulance and he tells and the father tells uh, the son listen I'm sorry that I ruined so much your your lecture he said no no, no you don't really ruin anything just relax everything will be okay don't worry don't worry and he says yes I did ruin like I did ruin so many things in between us the father is trying to Tell the child, but, but he's not allowed to get stressed. He's not allowed to because his heart is a very delicate situation now. And um, um, the father tells him, "Listen, I didn't know you progressed so much. You became so good. You, um, I'm so proud of you that um, you you are now giving lectures and and." You are advising so many schools, you have great, great psychology and everything. So, whatever is going to happen, I don't know, but you, you should know, he tells him, that my heart, even though it's a weak heart now, uh, my heart, in my heart, there's a lot of room for you, he says. I'm, I never told you these things, but I feel that I should. Well, the son felt very good. As they always say it's better late than never, right? But uh, sometimes people, people lose these opportunities even and they never have a chance to tell their ch the children that, that, uh, that they admire them, that they do a great job, <clears throat> that they're excellent, and so on. So, as I said before, people don't like to keep their kids hungry. But sometimes kids are not hungry to food, they're hungry to, to your good words. And that's sometimes more important than... Look at this, how a food to the neshama, it's like... It's like uh, to, to the neshama, it's like uh, the encouragement or praises, is like bread. There's a strange story in the Gemara about this demon that met Rabbi Yosei, okay? And he tells him, listen... I'm uh, in charge of your little uh, little town. Now I understand that there's another demon that wants to, to take this uh, control over me, that wants to take your, your place from me, and I don't want this to happen. I was a very good demon till now. I never hurt anybody, not during the day, not during the night. Please help me. Okay, what do you want me to do? On Friday, noontime, I want all the people of the town to get out of the houses, come to next to the river with the pots and pans and, and spoons and, and silverware and make a lot of noise and, and say that you are with me, that you salute me, that you are you know, fighting for me. He said, okay. They did that. Friday, they came out with all these things and they made a lot of noise. And at that moment, the water of the river started to make noise. They started to to uh, f to flow and, and to make it. Eh? And all of a sudden, instead of water, they saw a lot of blood coming out from the from the water of the river. This is when the demon came back to the rabbi and he said, "Thank you, thank you. I won this war. He helped me so much." No was trying to uh, 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 trying to understand, uh, they, they're not understanding what is this story in the Gemara, what exactly it tries to say. But they all say that we learn from here that even demons need our support. If demons need support and praise, what about human beings? What about we, husband, doesn't want his wife to support him, to praise him, to give you know, compliments? A woman doesn't need it from her husband. You're making cakes, you're making food, you make laundry, you make... If you don't get a thank you, it's like, so who do I do it for, right? And a child needs this 
support needs these compliments from you very much. He, the child is a, is a very is is a small. He's is a petite. He's is little one. And the way that you're going to raise him, okay? If he gets a lot of support, if he gets a lot of love, he will know how to love others. He will know how to appreciate others. If he doesn't get it, he's like. He's like raised damage, God forbid. And this we want to prevent. So, a child, not only when he's acting nicely, you praise him. Stan, you can say, I love you because, because I love you, because you're my son, not because you're a good boy. Because if you love him only when he's a good boy, he will challenge you. Let's see if you're not going to love me if I'll do this and this and that. You know? He will challenge you all the time. So, you tell him that you love him no matter what. And um, uh, this praise is supposed to be on specific things. Tell the child, um, yo, you were so fast. You're so fast you came out of the bed. You were ready to school so fast. I, I, it, it's beautiful. Or you fixed your bed so nicely. Or you fixed your room so nicely. Or, or uh, you finished your homework so fast. It was, you know, specific things. And don't... Um, mix these good praises with negative. Don't tell him, I see that you learn how to eat with a fork very nice, but I don't like the fact that you eat with open mouth. Well, what did you do now? You, you ruined the first praise because, it, you know, you, you, your focus was why do you eat with open mouth? You can tell him something like, um, you use your fork very nice, um, okay, and this is the way that people eat, but you tell him that if you're going to also eat when your mouth is closed, this is when you're going to be expert in, in manners, this is how, whatever, you just uh, change the phrase and make it, uh, make it nicer. So, sometimes people are afraid that praises will make the children spoil, and uh, it's not true. I'll give you some examples for uh, praises, um, how um, to do it in, in, a, in a positive way. So that the child also believes you, that you're telling him the truth, and it's not just uh, to, to get something from him. Thank you for taking out the garbage outside. It shows that he really likes to help me. Okay? Um, you understood how to fix this camera yourself. You're so smart. Kids are really smart, and if you give them the day, he will learn. If you give him the praise about this thing, next time he'll try to fix your vacuum cleaner, he'll try to fix the radio, <laughs> he will try to <laughs> fix the door of this cabinet that's broken because you praised him. What okay. about if the kids are the opposite? They like to break things apart. <laughs> they like it? Tell them good job. make a lot of accidents in breaking things around the house. Okay, well, is it purposely? Through play? Hmm? Through play. Through play. So, something... We're about big things. Right. So like just... <laughs> Windows. Mirrors. Windows? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the ball, you know, we're playing with basketball. No ball playing at all. And not outside. outside. It could be outside. Before so, you know it, boom. It right. Breaks. So, rules, like Kabasa says. And, um... You're and trying to give them some freedom outside, you know, in the backyard. Uh-huh. But before you know it. Okay. Of course, your thousand dollars. So right, right. So rules before you start to do something. You know, if you get it. You 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 go and you buy a game for your children, right? Right. Or you go and you buy a washing machine. Before you operate, you have to you have to learn. You have to sit and read all the operation rules. So if you want to play outside, what's okay? What's not okay? What? Many times they really didn't intend to. They didn't really want to. I read this today. I didn't read it here. But let's say you're with your husband by somebody's house and you take a, a tray with some plates, you want to take it to the to kitchen to help out and you sleep easily and, and it fell. <laughs> what happens? I'm so sorry. <laughs> it happens. You said yourself it happens. Your, your, your friend or to your cousin it happens. Okay? She wants to just to help you. You say, don't worry, don't worry, it happens. When it happens to your daughter, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, not so careful. 
you, you don't care about the money, you don't care about this, you're not careful, or whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's not true, it's not that they're not careful. The same way it happens to you, it happens to them too. We just sometimes demand too much from them, too much perfection. But if you tell and, them and the to play beings, over and over, it happens so right. often, what do we do? Right. Too often. Mm -hmm. Or too doing? often, like you know, you tell them not to run around because you're gonna break this, you're gonna so break that. So sometimes you cannot ask the, your kids something that's not doesn't make sense. You can't tell them sit they in one room it, and don't move. But they get to visualize what they do wrong and oh. what happens inside. Mm -hmm. They see it, but they'll repeat it again. So don't get nothing expensive. Maybe well, there is nothing expensive. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I still don't understand. I'll bring How they can break a window when they're they outside? Play the basketball? They play basketball. Okay. Because he's shooting, it goes right on the window. But the window is like double. I'm telling you, the so Barcelona in general. <laughs> general. I'm just general. saying. General. You know, running around the in the, the living room, okay, just like you're tapping each other, okay. and boom, the window's in the middle. Twice, you know, breaks from inside, it breaks outside. And you keep on telling, you know, try not to run, try not to run. So you you totally <laughs> believe the... Yeah, I know we're going out outside, but... I don't know. Um, yeah, that's what I said. And he was trying to save the money. And he did, he collected from the birthday and he gave the money to my husband oh, really? saying, go, you know, here's the money for the window that I broke. No. Oh, oh, God. God. Yes, Daniel, at least he did that. Oh, and then he asked us, like, how much is the money for? It's so good. He's good. He's going to try to collect the money. Now you can see he didn't do it. Let me finish. It's getting late. Let me finish with one story I read today about Talal and Mordecai Eliyahu. That's all. How careful he was with uh, children's feelings. It was pouring, okay? And after reading the Megillah, uh, they sit till close to midnight, they celebrate, they make, uh, I don't know, food or, or music and whatever, whatever. And then slowly, slowly, people are getting their stuff to, to leave. The rabbi also got up. There's a long day tomorrow. <laughs> There's a whole you know, long day before with the fast and with the reading and everything and everything. And then he sees in one of the corners sits a little boy and he cries and he cries and he cries. So he comes to him and he tells him, why are you crying? Seven year old boy. He says, you see this, uh, he, had a, he, had a, he had a sword, right, from plastic. It broke. You see this sword, it broke. What should I do? How should I go home now? So the rabbi is like, okay, he's a big rabbi. He could tell his parents, take him home, buy him a new one, or oh, what a typical parent would say, ah, it costs, what is it, $5, it's not, I'll buy you another one tomorrow, or it's not a big deal, don't make a fuss out of it, you're not a little boy, what are you, something you like to say. The rabbi took the sword and he said, let me think, how can I fix it? He went to... Uh, his wife had this, uh, where she saws the stuff, she has this box of sewing stuff, whatever. She takes a few uh, pins over there, he takes it next to the fire, he warms it over there, and then he puts uh, these two pieces of plastic together with wow. this there. He put it, he fixed it, he gave it to the child. The child was so happy! He kissed his hand and he went home happily. Um, He's a great rabbi. He's busy. He has a million things on top of his head. He has the next day. He could definitely, you know, ignore it, ignore it and, and do some other things. But he did pay attention to this little boy because it, 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 it bothered so much the little boy. He, f he felt interest. I made, I prepared a whole section how to, uh, how to be interested in our children because being interested in whatever interests them you become a friend, you, you share troubles, they know they can count on you, they can come to you, they can talk to you, because if, you, if you're saying, oh, it's not a big deal, don't make a big deal of it, of it of that, so you don't pay attention to, to her trouble, to his trouble. Um, here I prepared for you uh, 15 small things parents should do uh, um, with the children every day to make them feel loved. Okay, okay. 15 little things that you can read here. In the other side, I think we should put this in every one. I uh, found this uh, prayer for Chinuch Yeladim for children's education. 
it took my son uh, so a few hours to translate because I didn't find anything in English. Wow. So wow. it's translated and you could look at this prayed. It's not a shame, you should see a lot of Naha from your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the best with that a shame should grow in the Torah way. We should be happy with them and, and uh, all the best. Thank you so much, Bella. Amen. All the best to you. God bless you. Can I get a couple of copies, one for my sister? Sure. Who translated? Michael? Yeah. No.